Welcome to the material science of surfboards, bro. This video is brought to you by Teddy, Jack, Isaac, and Eric. The evolution of surfboards has been making boards smaller to give more control. This evolution was enabled by the use of new materials, which were lighter, more durable, and easier to shape. In this video, we will focus on polyurethane, polystyrene, and expanded polystyrene, which are coated with epoxy or polyester resin. People started hanging tin back in Hawaii in 1200 AD. Tahitian settlers used massive wooden boards, the largest of which were 200 pound, 20 foot long wooden monstrosities. Beginning in the 20s, boards started getting smaller and lighter after a surfer started drilling holes in his 15 foot wooden surfboard in order to hollow it out. This is also when the stabilizing fin was added to the surfboard and modern surfing was born. In 1949, we saw the first synthetic surfboard core emerge, a polystyrene core with mahogany veneer. It was sealed with fiberglass and resin. In the late 50s, polyurethane boards based on the polystyrene design saw mass production. With this new material, boards continued to shrink in size. Over the years, new materials have seen significant use, including polystyrene and expanded polystyrene. The starting point of any foam-based surfboard is the blank from which the basic shape is obtained. This is a polyurethane foam core, a popular substitute for wood. Once the core is made, it is cut in half and a wooden stringer is placed down the center for rigidity. The two halves are then glued back together. Shapers cut and sand the blank into a custom shape. A shaper also glasses the custom foam shape with an adhesive epoxy or polyester resin and then finally sands and polishes the finished surfboard. This process can be accomplished through the use of a machine or by hand. Before examining the materials used to craft modern surfboards, it is important to have an understanding of what makes a surfboard float. Any object placed in water, or any fluid, has a buoyant force acting in the direction opposite of gravity. This is true for objects that float and objects that sink. The difference between floating and sinking is how the buoyant force compares to the force of gravity. Polyurethane was first created as a replacement for rubber during World War II by Dr. Otto Bayer, and it was used for the manufacture of chemical protection garments and to prevent corrosion of metal, wood, and masonry. The polyurethane itself is made from a combination of polyol and a diisonate or a polymeric isonate. A variety of polyols and diisonates can be used, meaning many different possible types of polyurethane with different properties. These modifications could result in flexible or rigid foams, chemical resistant coating adhesives, and sealers. Polyurethane was first applied to surfboards in the 1950s. It was favored for its low density and its ease of shaping. Polyurethane foam is fluid enough to be poured and can be molded to any shape. As it sets, the foam expands and becomes rigid. Once hardened, polyurethane foam can be coated with any type of epoxy, resin, or polyester without melting to add rigidity and waterproofing. In addition, because the resulting foam is closed cell, it resists the absorption of water, even without an exterior coating. Polystyrene was originally discovered in 1839 by Edward Simon in Berlin, and was originally obtained by first distilling the resin of a Turkish sweet gum tree and then letting the material sit for several days. Simon originally incorrectly identified this material as styrol oxide. It was correctly identified as polystyrene in 1866 by a French scientist. In its raw form, polystyrene is a hard, brittle, clear plastic with a low melting point. In general, it's extremely cheap to create and manufacture, and thus has worked its way into countless everyday items. Today, polystyrene is obtained from crude oil or natural gas mining. When refining the crude oil, benzene and ethylene is obtained. These materials are used to produce ethyl benzene, which is further used in the creation of styrene. Polystyrene is then created through a process called polymerization, where the styrene monomers combine to form long chains called polymers. Polystyrene comes in several different varieties depending on how the material was processed. One type is known as extruded polystyrene, or XPS. Extruded polystyrene is created through the use of an extruder where the raw polystyrene, in the form of small, hard beads, is melted down and transformed to a less dense foam via the introduction of gases, such as CO2. The foam is extruded in billets roughly 20 centimeters in width, cooled, and then cut or glued together into desired shape. 
Extruded polystyrene was adopted as a surfboard material in the late 40s, originally covered in mahogany veneer. The main attraction to XPS was its low density, around 25 to 45 kilograms per meters cubed, which allowed surfers to push the limits of the sport. While at around 2 pounds per cubic foot density, it takes about 40 psi to compress extruded polystyrene by 10%. Therefore, extruded polystyrene has a greater compressive strength than polyurethane. The major drawback to this material is that it takes roughly two to four times the effort to shape by hand compared to polyurethane. Expanded polystyrene, as the name suggests, is an expanded, less dense version of polystyrene in the form of small beads. It is a closed cell, rigid, polymeric material which, after processing, is about 95% air. The white foam coolers you see at Walmart, they're all made of expanded polystyrene and it's also frequently used in packaging and as insulation. The processing of expanded polystyrene consists of three steps. The first step, the pre-expansion step, um, starts with the beads of styrene filled with a blowing agent, usually pentane, and they're ex then expanded at a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. The beads are essentially softened up by the high temperature and in their weakened state, the pentane in the beads causes them to expand to up to 50 times their original size. And that's why you see them consisting of 95% air. In the intermediate aging stage, as the beads cool down, most of the pentane turns to carbon dioxide and water, which creates a vacuum within the individual cells or beads of the expanded polystyrene. Air then slowly diffuses into the vacuum over the course of about 12 hours. The third and final step of the processing is called molding. The beads are placed into a mold which is sealed and heated using steam. Any pentane left in the beads causes them to expand even further, and that fills in the gaps within the mold. After the cooling process is finished, the molds are now ready to be cut. The major advantage to expanded polystyrene foam is its extreme low density of about 16 to 28 kilograms per meter cubed. Lower than that, even of the density of extruded polystyrene, which is around 25 to 45 kilograms per meter cubed. This density allows for boards to become shorter, skinnier, and more maneuverable. In addition to the advantage of low density, EPS has waterproof cell walls, which means the only way for water to enter its structure is through the gaps between the fused beads. Thus, the water absorption depends on the packing factor of the EPS block being tested. This value can vary depending on the manufacturing methods used. Though the beads themselves are waterproof, a crack in the resin of the board can still become an issue if enough water collects between the fused beads. The main disadvantage of expanded polystyrene is that shaping EPS blocks can be expensive. It requires using hot wire cutting machines or molds, which means they can easily be mass-produced, but custom boards are difficult to make. While at a density of about 2 pounds per cubic foot, expanded polystyrene takes about 60 psi to compress by 10%. This means expanded polystyrene has a greater compression strength than either polyurethane or extruded polystyrene. For surfing, the properties behind the material rule over all else, and because of this, a few materials have risen to the top of the surfboard industry. Polyurethane, polystyrene, and expanded polystyrene have become the standards of surfboard materials because they contain the correct combination of low density, high strength, and water resistance needed for this extreme environment.